الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا اما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القران المجيد والفرقان الحميد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شهر رمضان الذي انزل فيه القران هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم صدق الله العظيم respected brothers uh, and sisters there is a a reason why times of virtue come around and we have a cycle of them we have the five prayers coming in regular breaks over a 24 hour cycle we have the virtue of weekly fasts coming over a weekly cycle we have a vir- we have the virtue of monthly fast like the fast of the middle days of the month coming in a regular cycle a monthly cycle and then we have things that come regularly in the in an annual cycle the the, the great virtuous days um, of the sacred months right um, the 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 month of ramadan these are times of virtue that come around and these are times when almost always similar things are promised we're promised greater reward multiplied reward we're promised forgiveness and at expiation from sins the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam he tells us in many ahadith that the five prayers right ramadan to ramadan in some narrations umrah to umrah these things are mukaffiratun lima baynahunna illa majtunibat al kaba'ir these things expiate every all of the sins that are committed in between as long as major sins have been have been avoided so there is a reason for these coming but there's other reasons as well the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam was once visited by two sahaba and the story goes that hanzala radiyallahu ta'ala anhu one day uh, met Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and when he met him he he was worried and he said nafaqa hanzala it's a famous hadith he said hanzala has become a hypocrite so Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said to him you know what are you saying subhanallah ma taqul what are you saying that that you've become a hypocrite because he obviously thought that that meant that he had he was hiding kufr inside his heart right and so Hanzala radiyallahu anhu uh, explained to him what he means. He said, you know, um, we are with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And while we are with him, he reminds us of, of the fire. He reminds us of Jahannam. He reminds us of Jannah. And he tells us about them as if they are right in front of us. Ka'anna ra'i'ayn. They are as, as if we can see them with our own eyes. But then when we leave the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we go and mingle with our wives and our children and we deal with our wealth, you know, our land and our property, we forget all of that. That same level does not stay. It, it, it comes down. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu says, well, you know, Wallah, I feel the same. I have the same problem, you know, I go to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I'm in one state. And when I'm away from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I'm in another state. So they both decide to go to the Messenger of Allah. So Handala radiallahu anhu says that me and Abu Bakr radiallahu an, we both went to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and, uh, and I said the same thing, Nafaqa Handala, to the Messenger of Allah. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, well, how? What happened? And so he, he said, he told him his feelings. He said, when we're with you, you remind us of Jannah and Jahannam. And it's as if we see it with our own eyes. But then when we leave you and we mingle with our families and our wealth and so forth, 
nasina kathiran. We forget much of it. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this to him. He said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِ بِيَدِي لَوْ تَدُومُونَ عَلَى مَا تَكُونُونَ عِنْدِي وَفِي الذِّكْرِ لَصَافَحَتْكُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةَ عَلَى فُرُشِكُمْ وَفِي طُرُقِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ يَا حَنْضَلَ سَاعَةً وَسَاعَةً سَاعَةً وَسَاعَةً سَاعَةً وَسَاعَةً He said to him that Hanzala, by the one in, in whose hand is my soul, if you remained continuously on the same state that you are in when you are with me, and in the same level of consciousness, of dhikr, of remembrance, of mindfulness, then the angels would come and shake your hands while you are sitting on your beds. And they would come and shake your hands while you are on the streets. Meaning if you could maintain that level of, of heightened spirituality, that level of consciousness of God, that level of alertness, to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the, to the proximity of the Messenger of Allah, to, the, uh, to alertness to Jannah and Jahannam and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires of you, then spiritually you would be so elevated that the angels, you'd be aware that the angels are coming to you to shake your hands on your beds and they're coming to you to shake your hands on the streets. That would be your maqam. That would be your station. And this, is, this hadith gives an indication of the power of of God consciousness, of the power of spirituality, of the power that a person has in, in their spirit, in their soul, if they're able to reach certain maqams. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa confirms this in a hadith that's narrated, in an authentic hadith narrated by Muslim. But the point I'm trying to make is not one of what can happen if you become really spiritual, but really the point is that it is normal. The Messenger of Allah said, that this is what would happen, but, you know, in moments. Sa'atan fa sa'atan. The Messenger of Allah said to him, in time, slowly, gradually, you will, gradually you will increase. Gradually you will improve. You can't stay the same all the time. And this is why, when we come to the masjid, we feel one way. Then we go out of the masjid, naturally we feel differently. Because we are not in that environment anymore. Right? We go and we spend time with pious friends, with pious people, okay? And we feel one way. We go to a talk and a lecture and somebody gives a really powerful speech and they tell us Quran and they tell us hadith, right? And they tell us stories and we feel, we flee, we feel like, you know, like we're really motivated. Like I'm gonna go, I'm gonna fix things now. I'm gonna change myself now. But then when we go back, it deflates. That same feeling does not exist. But this is, this is not necessarily uh, a, f a crime. The way Handala anhu felt that because he didn't feel the same level of spirituality away from the Messenger of Allah, he must be a hypocrite. He thought it was a crime, that he'd done something wrong. But the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, it's not possible. You can't maintain that, right? So it's going to happen gradually. And for that reason, we need boosters. It's like a booster shot, you know, when you, have Im when you have immunization, right? You have an injection that's going to protect you from the flu, right? And then you have to have booster shots because it weakens over time. So you have a booster shot and then it, you become str strong again. So each act of worship is a booster shot so that we can go back to a certain level of consciousness and spirituality. And then we dip down again so we go back up and therefore things have to be Things have to be broken up so that we are constantly, there's this constant up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down motion. Over time, over time, a person starts to become accustomed to that level of spirituality. And it can take a lifetime. But only, only if a person has been steadfast in establishing his or her prayer. They've been steadfast in regular fasting. They've been steadfast in regular remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so forth. And sometimes we need a sustained boost. We need a sustained boost. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us Ramadan. Because sometimes you just coming and doing a 10 minute prayer isn't enough, right? Because the gradual, you have these spikes up down five times a day, but 
how far you go up because of that prayer, the dunya, as it takes over your heart, as it takes over your attention, how the boost that you have starts to weaken more and more. Right? So, it's not the beautiful recitation of the Imam in Fajr isn't as motivating as it once used to be. Right? So you start to dip a little bit more. The talk that the, the great Sheikh that you l- listen to on, everybody listens to on YouTube now, right? Nobody wants to go to the masjid and listen to the talk. Pick up the phone and listen to it on YouTube, right? So the Sheikh's talk, once the first time you heard it, you said it was amazing. SubhanAllah, you know, my heart felt like it was going to burst, you know, and I, I, was, I was crying in tears. But then a month later, you listen to the same sheikh, the same talk, or a similar talk, maybe even more powerful, and you don't feel the same anymore. Right? Because that's how we are. As human beings, we become accustomed to think, things, right? You know, the first night a man gets married, what does he feel? The first night a woman gets married, what does he feel? You know, like his heart is going to burst, right? There's nervousness, there's butterflies in the stomach, right? Three weeks later, you know, or a month later, suddenly he doesn't even take notice, right? Forgets to say goodbye when he goes off to work in the morning. <laughs> yeah? Things change, right? So this is the same. So sometimes we need sustained boosts. Sometimes um, a couple have to reignite things and go on holiday and spend some quality time together for a period of time. And, so, and then the honeymoon period comes back for a little while and then it goes back down again. This is human nature. This is what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us. And this is why when times like Ramadan come, we have to ask ourselves three things. We have to ask ourselves three things in in preparation for Ramadan. Because we understand this reality. Firstly, we have to ask ourselves, what are we taking into Ramadan? What are we taking into Ramadan? Secondly, How are we going to be in Ramadan? And third, what are we going to take out of Ramadan? Now, what are we going to take in? We take in with us our intention and our preparations. Our intention and our preparations. Preparations so that as soon as Ramadan begins, as soon as Ramadan begins, we are busy taking advantage of the fact that the shayateen are locked up. Because everybody here who fasts in Ramadan will admit that in Ramadan it's easier. Right or wrong? In Ramadan, it's easier. You naturally feel like, I'm going to do my tahajjud. You naturally feel, I'm going to do twice the amount of recitation of the Quran. You naturally feel, I'm going to spend more time in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You naturally feel that I'm going to spend more time in the masajid. Masajid are twice as packed for the five times prayer for Fajr than they are the rest of the year. How does this happen? Because people feel a natural elation, a natural spiritual uplift. Part of it is because the shayateen are locked up. Part of it is because we are fasting. Because what does food do? Food strengthens our animal self. Food strengthens our our bohemia is strengthened by food. And our bohemia naturally clashes with our spirituality. It naturally clashes with our spirituality. It's like the clash between sleep and wakefulness. Sleep is bohemia. Wakefulness is is a spiritual state. So sleep is going to clash with your tahajjud. Food is going to clash with your fasting. So when, when we fast, we are naturally in a heightened state of spirituality. Unless you get a really bad migraine, like I do sometimes. But naturally, you're in a heightened state of spirituality. And what, so natu- the, usually, when we deprive ourselves of things that are animal desires, right? It automatically gives us a spike in our spirituality, right? And in Ramadan, and whenever we fast, that's what we get. That's why we naturally feel inclined to do more worship. So we've got to be ready for it from day one. From day one we take advantage. Because if we don't, if we don't, then we'll come out of it with, with less than what we could have done, right? It's like, it's like you have an investment opportunity. Yeah? You have the opportunity to, do, to, to, to make a lot of money in a month. Right? But you spend that time lazy, you don't go into it properly, you don't take the right preparations, you don't, you don't prepare the right marketing, you don't have the right systems in place. So at the end of it, you make a loss, possibly, or you make nowhere near 
what you could have made. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already paved the way for us. He's opened the doors of mercy. The angels are, are locked up. Naturally, we are more spiritual at the time. Naturally, fasting is a shield. Naturally. Right? It is a shield because it protects us from sin. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam told young people that if you can't keep your gaze down and you can't get married, then fast. Did he not? Why did he tell them, tell them that? Because, because naturally, it suppresses that animal instinct. The desire, the desire for gratification. Right? So it suppresses that because they fast. So we have all of that naturally in Ramadan. Now how unfortunate if it is wasted. So we take preparation into Ramadan. Then part of that preparation is what are we going to do in Ramadan? We have to have a routine. Every single one of us has to ask ourselves, how much Quran am I going to recite? Right? How much am I going to recite? How much dhikr? How am I going to adjust my day? I know brothers and sisters who take time off in Ramadan. They take time off in Ramadan. That's it, Ramadan, I can't be doing my 9 to 5 or, or whatever. Right? They take time off. That's not possible for everyone. You can't always. That's not even a requirement, right? So we have to fit in more. We've got to do more. So that's so the preparation in terms of our routine, in terms of what we are going to do, it has to be prepared. Like people, the most productive people, successful people, take due preparation. Successful people plan their day. Successful teachers plan their lessons. So successful Muslims in Ramadan plan their Ramadan. Okay? The third thing is what are we going to take out of Ramadan? And this is where this whole question of spirituality comes in. If Ramadan is like this for us, a sharp rise and then a sharp drop, then there's something wrong with it. We've done something wrong. So we didn't pray before Ramadan. And then we go Ramadan and we pray all of our salawat. And then straight after Ramadan it dips. In fact, the sins begin on Eid day. If it's like that, then there's something wrong with our Ramadan. Allah forbid. It could be that we worshipped Allah in Ramadan only because that's the culture. Because that's the culture. Because everybody's doing it. How can I not do it? So you go along with the flow. You go along with the crowd. That's not good enough. We have to go along with it consciously. Because we want to worship Allah. Because we want to take advantage. Now, Here's the problem. Sometimes the shaitan tricks us. The shaitan makes us think, you know, it's hypocritical. This is why I mentioned that hadith. The shaitan makes us think, I'm a hypocrite because just before Ramadan, I wasn't praying, I wasn't worshipping so much, I wasn't reciting the Quran, and now suddenly in Ramadan, I'm going to do more. Do you understand? How is Allah going to accept that? That's hypocritical. No, it's not. That's exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to do. This is what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling Handala radiallahu anhu. He's telling Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu that it's normal. It's normal. You're going to feel a boost at certain times in certain places. And you're going to, that boost is going to go and that motivation is going to go. You go to Umrah and you stand in front of the Kaaba and you pray. It's not the same as praying here. It's not going to be the same. But just because that difference is there, doesn't mean that a person is a hypocrite. That doesn't mean a person has done something wrong. Those places are there so that we can taste it. Right? So that we can taste what it's like to be in that state of heightened spirituality. And then we can aim to try to gradually bring ourselves up to that level. So that we can take that pleasure and say, you know, I want more of it. So, if we have that intention, that Ramadan is my boost, then when it drops, it shouldn't drop too far. Right? So on a scale of 1 to 10, if Ramadan took you to 10, and before Ramadan you were on 2, the aim should be that after Ramadan, it doesn't drop beyond 6. Right? And then gradually over time, it will begin to peter out. It will begin to drop because that is our nature. So we have to find something else. Right? So after Ramadan, there is the 6 fast of Shawwal. To keep it going. And then afterwards, everything boils down to how much thought we put into it. If we put thought into it, we'll think, you know what, fasting has been so effective for me, I'm going to fast Mondays and Thursdays. Okay? Tahajjud has been so effective for me in Ramadan. Okay, maybe I can't sustain it five days, five days a week, but I'll do Tahajjud in the weekends. Alright? Or I'll do some extra nawafil after Isha before I go to sleep. Just to keep things going. It's all down to us. 
All right, but what we can't do is allow ourselves to get tricked by the shaitan into thinking, oh well, you know, maybe I'm getting sin because I can't keep it up. No, you're not. That is not the case. That is who we are. As human beings, this is who we are. We have ups and downs. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala engineers the up for us. He gives us the boost. He gives us conducive, a conducive environment. He gives us a conducive time, right? When all of the relevant, all of the obstacles have been taken out, right? And we've been naturally boosted so that we can taste it. If you taste good food, you're going to probably come home and say, you know what, I tasted this really, really good dish. Could you try and cook it? Alright? Or maybe you'll try and cook it yourself. But the point is, it's only because you've tasted the other one, right? Otherwise, what difference do you know? You know, it's bread and cheese all the way. Okay, so we, that's, that's the point, my dear brothers and sisters. That is the point. So, what are we taking into Ramadan? How are we going to spend Ramadan? And what are we going to take out of Ramadan and the same thing goes for every other time of, of, of blessing it's a great blessing it's a it's a great virtue that we've even arrived here you know this is to, to, to receive life so that we can worship is a bounty from Allah to receive time so that we can worship is a bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we, we've received it we've received it enough this year to reach Shaban. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us all into Ramadan inshallah ta'ala so that we can benefit from Ramadan and take a lot out of it. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum li sa'ali al-muslimina min kulli dhammin fa astaghfiruh innahu huwa al-ghafurur rahim.